and welcome back to Philosophy of University. This is episode 11. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to read a cross-stitch chart. If you watched our last video, this video should be pretty short because we covered some of it last week. Um, but we just wanted to have a video real quick that's just like, here's what you do to read a chart. Here's where you stitch. Here's where you don't stitch. Yeah. If you are new, especially if you are new to the world of cross-stitch on floss tube, we are a cross-stitch channel. Um, I'm Stephanie. I'm Allison. And our channel is Cross-Stitch the Globe. On Mondays, we come out with floss tube episodes, which is where stitchers do long deep dives into their personal stitching. They're really fun and very addictive. <laughs> um, <laughs> Everybody stitches different things, and then you find yeah. a designer you've never seen. You find a fabric you oh, know, that, you, you find a fabric. that you absolutely need to have, and it's a lot of fun, and you should watch all so of them. So subscribe and um, join us for that. And then, so every Thursday, we come out with a beta tutorial. On Mondays, we either are putting out a personal floss tube episode or um, a floss tube extra deep dive, like a chart parade, or a parade of all of our works in progress, or how to make needle winders, just different topics that if we put them in our regular floss tube episodes would make them way too long. Mm -hmm. The reason we're doing these tutorials are so that people who shop in our Etsy shop have like a quick, eventually a quick library <laughs> of, all of all of the cross stitch topics that they might need to know to get started. However, putting them on YouTube means everyone can join us. Yeah. So if you are an experienced stitcher and this topic um, is if you're past this topic, but you're like, let me just see what they're saying. Yeah. And you have more tips, please leave them in the comments. And if you're here to find out how to read across the chart, check out the, the comments as well to see yeah. if anybody's left any great nuggets. Yeah. This community is wonderful about passing on the knowledge. So we love it. Take advantage of it because it's just, it's so special. Yeah. We, we really love it. All right. So today is really, it should be, we'll, we'll see, but we sh this should be our shortest video ever. <laughs> we'll see. This is really... <laughs> The shortest video ever. Well, our longest video is two and a half hours. So this right. should be our shortest video ever. Um, how to read a cross stitch chart. So you've bought a chart. You already know what all the parts of the chart are because you either didn't know and watched our last video or you like already knew, but you're like, okay, but now what do I do? So I have this thing. What do I do? Mm -hmm. All right. So in the future, we'll talk about like how to buy your threads and like how to organize your stuff. Those are future videos. But let's just assume you're literally sitting there you have all your materials and you're ready to go how do you read this chart how does this chart become a stitched piece mm -hmm. so it's very simple you look at your chart and you and we're gonna have videos on like should you start in the middle like where to start but let's just assume for simplicity's sake you're gonna start in the upper left hand corner um that's my favorite spot it's uh, it's not it's very situational which is why we're gonna have videos about like the different things about it but for the most part, I'm full coverage. I'm an upper left-hand corner person unless I have a margin issue and then I'll try to start in the middle and work my way over. Sure. But okay, so if I was gonna start in the upper left-hand corner, I would go to the upper left-hand corner and I would look at that symbol, okay? Um, and then I would go to my floss list or also known as a thread legend. And I would look and say, okay, well that symbol is DMC 775. So I would go open my kit or pull out my floss mm -hmm. ring or whatever mm -hmm. I'd go to my project bag and I'd pull out my floss ring and I'd pull up 775 and I'd load my needle up and I would stitch it mm -hmm. and you can there are many ways many ways to decide where? after you do that first stitch where you go next and those yeah. are separate videos but literally you see the symbol and you go find that color and you stitch it or that blend or the blend or that metallic <laughs> and you stitch it right. and that's why you have to go to your thread legend and if it's a symbol that's not in your thread legend, then you go check the stitch guide and see, oh, is this a different kind of stitch? Right. Now, or is that a space for a bead or? Or, yeah. Um, or is that like, if there's a line over the symbol or if the symbol is smaller, maybe a half stitch or something. So stitch or, yeah. you want to look at the symbol and then see, does that symbol match what's on your thread list? And if it doesn't, then you need to go to your stitch guide and see like, oh, when the symbol is half the size, it's a half stitch or right. whatever. Yeah. From the, this pattern, it doesn't have any specialty stitches or anything, so you just go. And, but, but mine literally, does. But. <laughs> yeah. Mine has all kinds of, <laughs> all kinds of issues. And we're only showing patterns that we know we can show, like this is yeah. a pattern I designed. Obviously, I hope you wouldn't stitch it from this, <laughs> or I don't even know how you would because it, we would only have like some of it. But yeah. Yeah. Um, if you have a blank space, so like this, this chart has no blank spaces because it's full coverage. But if you yeah. had that chart, I just, you can just see part of it. 
when you get to the blank spaces, it may sound normal, but you don't stitch it. Yeah. So that is how you know, like, there's nothing stitched there. Yeah. However, if you import this pattern into, like, Pattern Keeper or Markup XP, sometimes those pa those programs will misidentify empty spaces as stitch spaces. And so you have to either decide you're going to go in and unselect 12,000 stitch spaces. I'm not. So I just know, okay, like, I have double the progress or whatever because I'm not stitching those. Right. Um... You also need to know like, okay, so on the chart, so like if you have like a center line, right? You might have like the center of the pattern might be marked, but that's not the center of the page. So you need to know where you are in the page. So I, my patterns have, um, so numbering on the chart should number for the whole chart, not just for that page, but right. Where and where the like center lines are should be for the whole chart, not just that page. Mm -hmm. So you can't really look at it myopically, like it's just for this one section. Um, so like on my charts, the program that I do them in automatically tells you which page goes where. Not every chart has this, but the bigger charts, like full cover charts, tend to. Mm -hmm. So you want to know like where you are in the chart, um, and you want to know like. I and mean, we're going to talk about fabric and margins and everything, but if you are doing full coverage, it's really easy because you just start where you want to start considering your margin or you do a center start. Yeah. But if you're starting a design that has like no nothing in the top left corner, it may oh, change right. where you need to, how much you need to count or where you need to go. Right. To make it com more comfortable for you, you might shift where you start. Right. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So when you're reading the pattern, you need to know like, okay, well that is a stitch or that's not a stitch because if it's not a stitch it's still part of the design area so you still be but you it's a design area that needs to be left blank so you need to leave that stitch blank not start your like not move your, your stitch i'm saying this really weird but um okay so just don't stitch the blank ones yeah yeah so for example this pattern is going to list her this area for her whole area then if I want margin to go outside of the border in the frame, then I need to leave that extra fabric. So that will affect where you start. But like in here, that is all not stitched. So you wouldn't want to change like your fabric area to a smaller than the stitch area, even if there are where you would naturally start isn't a stitch space. I don't think I'm explaining that great, but if someone wants to explain that, like what I mean in the comments better, I think you guys know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, just to make sure that your fabric is yeah. wide enough and tall enough, even oh, though it actually, might be. I can show, I actually have it here randomly. I have here the pattern that caused me this problem. Oh, okay. Um, the finish that caused me this problem. So when I started this piece, this is uh, Bobby Dyer by the Witchy Stitcher. Oh, and when yeah. I started it, I was only starting the top left and I should have started this one in the center. Oh, uh -huh. And I restarted in the center, but didn't fix the issue. But, um, so I wasn't counting, like I wasn't allocating for this space correctly as not stitched spaces, but still area of the pattern. And okay. it ended up affecting. Yeah. Like, so you should probably should have, if you had seen that closer to the edge you wouldn't have yeah i probably i should i probably should have started this at yes. the top center yeah, like right funny. here but I, my brain wasn't reading the non-stitch spaces as no stitch goes there but it's still part of the design okay okay so and I, if you wanted to ignore that you could do like a rounded frame or whatever but if you want to frame it as a rectangle then that corner still needs to be there mm -hmm. and see how i actually like mm -hmm. yeah so that I, I don't know if that explains what i'm saying better but um, then basically the negative space is as important as the stitch spaces. Area. Yeah. And the symbol for that is no symbol, but it doesn't make it less important. Right. Um, and then you just want to also know like, you, you know, backstitch and stuff like, is it going over? Is it going to the side? Does it change the size of your stitch? Yeah. Um, um editing Stephanie, uh, back again. Um, I just want to really succinctly wrap this up with a couple of graphics because I think by the time we were talking about this that day my brain was fried so basically you find the first symbol and I'm gonna start putting graphics up here find the first symbol that you want to stitch find the floss that corresponds to that symbol on your um, floss list or thread legend if the symbol doesn't take up the full square look at your stitch guide for what stitch is the called for stitch in that situation 
Um, it could be a three quarter, like it could be a smaller stitch, like a three quarter stitch or a specialty stitch, like a French knot. Um, if it's a really common way to mark that stitch, it may not be listed in your stitch guide or thread legend. Um, and in that case, you know, Google or by, you know, at some point we'll have videos on all of the different ways to mark these, but, it's a, but if it doesn't, just Google it. And then you see a straight line that goes across multiple grid boxes. That usually indicates um, back stitch, straight stitch, or long stitch. Look at the stitch guide in Thread Legend for um, what colors to stitch it in and how many strands to stitch it with. And then um, look closely at the pattern to see where those stitches should actually change because that they, um, like you really wanna follow where on your pattern the back stitch is. Um, very closely and so look at both the pattern and also the stitch model for guidance there. Um, so really reading across the pattern is pretty simple once you know how to do it so if we left anything out that you are stuck up on please leave it in the comments and we will explain further because I feel like we covered it but I don't maybe it's too simple and now or, I'm like yeah I think we're overthinking this. yeah so if there's a symbol you stitch it if there's not a symbol don't stitch it Take into account your margins, not only on each side of finishing it, as in finishing it, but as in how, where on the fabric you want your project to be centered. Right. Basically. And negative space should be included in that, in that decision. In that yeah. decision. So. Um, all right. So that is yeah. how to read a crossage pattern. Yeah. And um, if you're new, subscribe. We'd love to have you uh, on Mondays on our like really crazy deep dives. So. <laughs> It's fun. All right, bye guys. Thanks. Bye.